Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Raking Around the Diamond, the Texas Rangers discussion segment of the Bear of Texas podcast. My name is Alex Alcazaz, a.k.a. the Bear of Texas. And ladies and gentlemen, the Texas Rangers have acquired right-hander Jake Odorisi from the Atlanta Braves. As part of the trade, the Texas Rangers have sent Kobe Allard, and also, aside from Jake Odorizzi, the Rangers have also got cash out of the deal. Well, obviously the Rangers got off to a very, very good start this offseason by bringing in Bruce Bocci as the, te- as the new team manager. And of course, I said where we go on from here is what we'll do in the trade market, in free agency, so that everything else remains to be seen. But the Rangers are already getting some work done. Well, to be honest, uh, sending away Kobe Allard, okay, I got to be honest with you, I really, I was really hoping that the Rangers would actually do something with him because the whole Kobe Allard experience has really, truly, honestly not worked out at all. As a matter of fact, to be honest with you, to say that the whole Kobe Allard experience has not worked out, I can honestly say, ladies and gentlemen, that would be one hell of an understatement. So as we know, you know, Allard, you know, back to the Atlanta Braves, he was actually selected 14th overall in the first round of the 2015 Major League Baseball draft, drafted out of San, uh, San Clemente High School uh, down in Southern California. You know, I, I remember, I think, you know, in July of that year, he signed on for $3 million and kind of started working his way through the minor league uh, system of the, of the uh, Atlanta Braves organization. And on July 30th, 2019, Allard was actually traded to the Texas Rangers, and the Rangers sent Chris Martin. And immediately when Kobe Allard arrived, he was optioned to AAA Nashville. And he was there briefly. Actually, if I remember correctly, he only started one game for Nashville, and then the, then the Texas Rangers immediately called him up to the main roster. And, and that, was, that was in 2019. And, and according to the, my notes, you know, he started nine games, a master record of four and two with an ERA of four of uh, four point ninety six, thirty three strikeouts in forty five and one third innings, which is actually not so bad. Okay, not so bad at all. So it started off okay, and then by the time 2020, 2020 arrived, expectations and hopes for uh, Kobe Allard certainly increased. But uh, but of course, you know the whole pandemic thing started. The whole you know MLB season you know got. Delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed, driving me absolutely crazy. And and then when the season did end up happening, I mean, Aller just 2020 was just not his year. I mean, if I mean he went winless that season, 0 and 6, an ERA of 7.75 in three in 33 and two thirds innings. Ugh. And, and last year, and then in 2021, that following season. <laughs> That's where things even just got worse because in 2021 he finished with a record of three and twelve, a ERA at 5.41, struck out 104 batters in, in in innings of 124 and two third innings. Okay, and this was in 2021. So, whew, man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Now, Allard last season spent the spent the entire season with AAA Round Rock. Now, he was a starter with AAA and Round Rock, and he appeared in 20 games. Now, overall, his stint on the main roster with the Texas Rangers, Kobe Allard actually finished with a record of 9 and 20, uh, with a record of 9 and 23, an ERA of 6.07 and 65 career game, and in those 65 career starts, uh, excuse me, 65 career games, 35 of those games were starting, were starting matches for him. I apologize, I'm kind of getting my, uh, Words mixed up a little bit. So let me do if it one more time for clarity and make sure I get it right. So Allard was nine and twenty-three with an ERA of six point zero seven, played in sixty-five games with the Rangers, and of those sixty-five games, thirty-five were starts. Alright. And was with the triple A round walk last season as a starter, started in twenty games. Uh, well as far as far as that goes, you know. The fact that the Rangers were able to actually make a decent trade is actually very, very good. So, now, as far as Jake Odorisi goes, it's definitely something exciting, but we got to see how things, you know, go out, you know, for the, for the next uh, coming season. 
Now, according to this from ESPN, Odorisi has a player option for the 2023 of six and a half million dollars, and there's a minimum buyout of three point twenty five million. So right now, as far as Jake Odorisi goes, I'm not sure what the Rangers will make out of it. I'm sure they're gonna, I mean, and I'm hoping they're at least gonna, you know, keep him around and see, see what he's got. I would imagine that basically Jake Odorisi will be kept around the Texas Rangers organization until at least um, spring training. We'll have to see how things go for spring training. Then I'm sure the Rangers will, make, will do something. But right now, I think the Rangers, if they you know acquire Jake Odorisi, they might as well they might as well you know see what they can do with him. They they might as well give him a chance and whatnot, and we'll take it from there. So I'd be pretty surprised if the Rangers you know got rid of him so quick, but. But if we're, being, if we're being frank here, I really doubt that that's going to happen. So as we know, Jake Odorisi was an all-star in the year 2019 when he was a member of the Minnesota Twins. Of course, that year he had a, a career best of 15 wins. You know, that 2019 season for Jake Odorisi was quite memorable. You know, finished 15-7. and seven. So, you know, of, of course, in 2020, he actually only, you know, started four games, but, you know, finished 0-1, and, and then, you know, arrived in Houston in 2021, and then, you know, spent a full, spent the four, full uh, 2021 season with the Houston Astros and finished 6-7. and seven. He was 4-3 and three with Houston before the Astros shipped him off to Atlanta, where he finished 2-3, and three. so Jake Odorisi is coming off a 6-6 six and six season, so... Odorisi is definitely in a position to where he's definitely going. He's definitely going to improve himself. You know, he was six and six, and his ERA was four point forty. Okay, and this was in twenty two games total. So six and six, you know, six and six in, in twenty two games, and then a, an ERA at four point forty. That's certainly not the worst, but it can certainly be better. So, so right now, honestly, at at this point, as as far as the Rangers organization goes. We're still kind of moving forward, you know, waiting for free agency to happen, and we'll see what the Rangers do then there. And I'm really hoping the Rangers, you know, the, I mean, even the last year, you know, all you know, nearly half a billion dollars invested in free agency. I'm still hoping the Rangers can do some a little bit of more shopping. But as, as far as the Rangers go, I'm not entirely sure what center they need to focus on as far as the team goes. Now, pitching is always, always definitely a problem for the Rangers, but, but you know, with Bruce... Uh, uh, Bocci, you know, now as, as the manager, I'm sure that right now he and the Rangers uh, front office are certainly already begun the process of uh, hoping to rebuild the Rangers in, in, in hopes of turning them into a playoff team and hopefully, you know, in turn of, of helping them become a team that can not only make the World Series, but win it. And you know, now that the Houston Astros have two World Series titles, I mean, the Rangers are really starting to get to the point you now we need to win the World Series too. So, anyway... So, uh, seeing this uh, bit of news, again, it did surprise me, but, you know, the move can certainly work. I mean, who knows? Maybe it will, maybe it can't, but, you know, we, we got to wait and see. But Jake Odorizzi, you know, has 237 career starts. He's got a record of 74 and 61, okay? And his overall career ERA is 3.99, okay? So, it's really respectable, it, it really is. You know, was it with Kansas City in 2012, and then from 2013 to 2017, he was with Tampa Bay before he spent three seasons with the Minnesota Minnesota Twins before he before a, a season and a half or so with the Houston Astros, and then you know, of course we you know finished last season with the Atlanta Braves. Uh, so right now, honestly, I'm I'm just gonna go out and wait and see now. He uh, as, as far as his playoff uh, career goes, you know, he did uh, actually uh, he's only had one start in the playoffs, which was back in 2019 which he lost. So so you know, for Odorizzi, you know, also really it's to kind of help him he w- really would love to have the chance to improve his uh his uh, playoff um records as well, but but right now as far as this stranger as far as this move goes, is it a huge move? I mean, I wouldn't say it's a huge move, but it's definitely, you know, it's definitely a business move. And now, again, Odorizzi, you know, his career best was back in 2019. And do, do we have to basically put him in a position to where we expect him to kind of, you know, be back to that, that next se- the following season in 2023 for the Rangers? No, not exactly. Because right now, I'll, I'll be honest, Odorizzi is not guaranteed to even be with the team by the time the season starts. So right now, the way I see it is... 
Oritzi, I'm sure, is going to be invited, is going to be part of the team, is going to be with the team in spring training. And we're going to see how things go in spring training. And Because right now, we got to see if, if he even makes the opening day roster. I mean, see, right now, we don't even know if he's going to if he's end up in the bullpen or end up on the pit, on the starting rotation. I mean, right now, there, there, there are no guarantees. Everything is basically a theory. Basically, it's all but uh, right now we have no answers. There's a lot of questions, you know, the, a lot of unanswered questions because we don't know what the future holds. I mean, the, the Rangers made the move, but we got to see where things go moving forward. And honestly, I don't, you know, I don't think we're, we're really going to see. We're not going to have the fullest update until the end of spring training. So, so, so right now, honestly, uh, un, until we see whether Odorizzi makes the opening day roster or not, I mean, really, there's, there's. There's it's nothing to go from you know from that point on so so right now all I can do is is wait and see how things go in spring training I mean anything could happen even before spring training so so right now as far as the Texas Rangers and Jake Odorizzi goes then you know we'll have to wait and, and we'll have to wait and see what happens because really at this point anything could happen so basically I'm in a position to where I'm going to expect the unexpected because. I don't know what can happen because, quite frankly, anything can happen. And that is all I have to say. Ladies and gentlemen, Raking Around the Diamond is proudly brought to you by Fanatics. Fanatics is your number one place for fan apparel. Fanatics offers over 500,000 items from all the top brands from the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, the NHL, and so much more. If you are looking to shop at Fanatics, just find Raking Around the Diamonds link in the episode description. You can get your sports merch, and you can save money by taking advantage of the best deals in the world. And for all you pro wrestling fans out there, WWEShop.com is now part of the Fanatics experience. If you are looking to shop with WWEShop.com, you can find the link in the episode description. You can get your pro wrestling merch, and again, you can save money by taking advantage of the best deals in the world. And finally, Raking Around the Diamond is also proudly brought to you by Paramount+. Plus. Paramount Plus is where you can stream live sports as well as stream your favorite shows from CBS, Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, and so much more. Plans start at just $4.99 per month, and you can even cancel at any time. Subscribe now. You can even get a free trial. So if you're looking to subscribe to Paramount+, Plus, just find the link in the episode description. You can set up your account in less than two minutes, and then you can immediately start binge-watching sports and, again, your favorite show. And Raking Around the Diamond is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. Thank you all very, very much for joining me today. And I will see y'all next time.